Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Eddie Marcus here. And one more time early this morning. I was just thinking about churches. I was thinking about God. I was thinking about we the people. And I was thinking about what kind of um, melting pot that would be. And then the thoughts that came my mind, that crossed my mind, uh, indicated that I grew up in the church. My earlier life was in the Methodist church, in the Methodist church. And as I became a young man, I moved over in the Baptist persuasion. And in the later years, I spent more, most time in the Pentecostal movement. And I can say one thing, a couple of things that's coming about most of them. Their intentions are the best to serve and give service to God with a sincere heart. I have to say that about all of the movements. At the time that I was engaged with them, I also must admit that I really saw nothing that brought them to any standard of representing God. I never saw anything that met a standard of representative of God. And when I came on the scene, when I was called upon the scene, when this great power that moves mountains and moves people and moved me, and the message was to bring and share the message with whomever could hear it, but it basically wanted to be uh, aware and grateful for the service of the people and their religiosity, that's my word. But the truth of the matter is that they were on the path to hell, every last one of them. And the amazing thing is, having brought that message forward, no one asked any questions. No one wanted to touch it. Not the church, any of them. They, that was not even a discussion. And I think what really happened that brought it to that point, ladies and gentlemen, is this, is that even though you can find that these different denominations have uh, various reasons that they document that make them different than others. They still believe in the common God. Now, the difference between them and the truth is that they believe in the common God, which allows all kind of stretches of the imagination. The point is that they're missing is, is to know God. And see, to know God means leadership. It doesn't mean following anybody. It means leadership. Leadership down the path that God has given you. Now, your path is not my path. My path perhaps is not your path. But you go your path and I go my path and they are both representative of God because they are open to all. There's no special message for this group or that one. Or it's open for all. That's the way love is. Everything that needs it, gets it. You see what I'm saying? And you cut it off. It's like a car. You don't give it its oil, that engine is going to break down. And so what is really happening in the church and in religiosity is that it is not feeding the people. It really never has. But at one time, I can must say, it appeared to be a little bit more genuine than now. It wasn't, but it appeared to be because we didn't, couldn't see it all over the place. So what am I basically saying? I'm basically saying that the churches of America and the churches of the world are basically set up on the same structure of the world, of the systems of the world. 
they are maintained by the same structure of the systems of the world. That is not God. God is changed. God is different. God is unique. God is what they have said in the book, peculiar. And those who are being led by that spirit are peculiar people. They're not peculiar doing the same thing. See, here's the main example that I'm speaking of. In the world's eye, you get money as the motivating force. You look at a, ask you this, look at anybody that's good at anything that they do. Whether it's a dance, whether it's a swimmer, whether it's a, a basketball player, whether it's a, you know, I'm going to say teacher, but they don't pay you that much for teaching. Uh, whatever. That, but you're good. Why? Because you want to be good. That's why you're good. Money is just gravy. When uh, those gentlemen who came up with uh, computers, came up with the telephone, they came up with electric lights, came up with the telegraph, these guys weren't doing that for their money. They were just expressing the genius that they brought. And this is the <clears throat> genius. But the system was set up to take it, to control it, to manipulate it by money. You got this great idea, I pay you this amount of money. You're a football player, you're good, I give you $300 million for a few years of service. So I'm taking you. See, the gifts that you bring are gifts to the world, gifts to the public, gifts to all people. Now, the world isn't saying that you can't get it. It's just saying you can't get it unless you got the money. Which means that some people can get as much as they want, some can get or something a little less, some can get a little less, and some can get none. But that's the system, and it works that way for a reason. <laughs> to maintain itself just the way it is. That's the best way I can say it. It works that way as the reason to maintain itself just the way it is. And if they're gonna make any changes, it's the changes that will benefit the few at the expense of the many. But see now, <clears throat> God's way is not about that. It's all, you got all of that to bring and give to, you give it to the people as freely as the material resources that's hidden in the earth have been given to you. You didn't pay one cent for the minerals and the, and the resources that's in the earth. That's right there given to you. You didn't pay one cent for the water where you are supposed to. It was given. You don't pay one cent for the air and the oxygen that you breathe. It was given. And for anybody to take it and decide to use it in such a way that it can be beneficial for some and less beneficial for others, got to be misguided. It got to be misled. And only a person who knows that they are misled will stand up and tell them. See, others might believe that don't look right, that don't feel right. Well, well, they smarter than me, uh, so you don't say anything. But when you know, when you have seen everybody having what they wanted, what they need, what they desire, when you knew that that would bring peace and prosperity for all and freedom and joy and dreams being fulfilled, just because people exercise their individual gifts because they were good at it, and they now are being about it. And all of the heavenly stuff is the result of it. Free, our gifts free, resources free, our satisfaction free. That's God's way. This is why I say these things to you. Now, what church would have an argument with that? What were you gonna tell me, that you can't do that? Who told you you couldn't do that? Who You you said it's going to happen when you die and go to heaven. Who told you it was going to happen when you die and go to heaven? Who told you that? 
it wasn't God. You might have got it out of book, but I guarantee you, you didn't get it from God. You might have got it from somebody talking, but I guarantee you didn't get it from God. And I guarantee you, you haven't gotten too much of this that you're hearing right now. And I wonder, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to do the same that everyone else has done? <laughs> you say, well, what have they done? I say, ask them. They'll say, I don't know, never heard of it. That's what they'll say, and that's the truth. Why? Because the intent of that power that would prevent you from hearing and changing your life is preventing it from happening. They have the ability to open it up so you can hear everything that people like Donald Trump says. And they have the ability to shut down so people like me, you can hear nothing. <laughs> but in the end, ladies and gentlemen, the truth will win. I want to stop right now because it's such a pleasure. I got something I got smoking here. Some good old quiche my wife cooked. And an egg and some. Oh, they're hot smoking coffee. So I'm going to get to it. And I want to thank you so very much for giving me this your time this morning. Till next time, goodbye.